Hey guys, I wanted to uh, show you a few things. I know I haven't been on in a while. I just haven't felt led, but I've been watching with you and I've been, you know, observing all these things with the, the uh, hybrid solar eclipse. And, um, and there's something about that that, that struck me. And I'm going to pull together a lot of different things. Just in the past couple hours, the Lord has led me from one thing to another with all this information that just came to me or I didn't know or I found. And one thing was in the comments. And um, so uh, basically, to sum it up, it has to do with a possible seven day warning from the hybrid solar eclipse taking you to April 26th or 7th. Um, now, one of the things, first of all, that hybrid solar eclipse, as you probably know by now, you know, it, it was a sign to uh, right before the rise of power for Hitler. And it also hit on April 20th, Hitler's birthday, another year, which we just passed. And it, April 20th, April 20th was also Ticklish's birthday. So I, I feel like it's like, okay, you want to go with either Ticklish or, or Hitler here, because Ticklish, of course, is symbolic of the innocence and the adorableness of the innocence of, of God's love. And Hitler, of course, the Antichrist image, right? He's the type and shadow prototype of the Antichrist. And that's why this hybrid solar eclipse is telling us that the Antichrist is about to take power. And uh, there was, by the way go to it quickly out of um okay out of 224 eclipses in the 21st century only seven were hybrid okay so one thing that struck me is that hybrid also what it really means is like when you mix genes and the age of the antichrist this you know the whole thing with the b system it has to do with it's related to the hybrid uh the, the mixing genes that don't go together that you're not supposed to mix and during the tribulation you're going to see a lot of hybrids you're going to see because they're already doing it that you know they're mixing the genes of animals with people um all kind of freaky things you know i've seen pictures of like a weird looking person with big monkey ears and weird just really gross a pig a man i saw a pig with a man's face once i mean they they do some pretty creepy things in in the labs and it but during the tribulation I think one of the things you're going to see is there's going to be weird looking monsters everywhere, hybrids everywhere. And I, that's why I think that this solar eclipse hybrid, it, it's symbolic of, of this is, which is about to start the antichrist, the rise of the antichrist and the age of the hybrid, the seven years of hybrid. And of course the mark of the beast itself, you know, will completely destroy your DNA and send you to hell. So don't take the mark of the beast if you're here. Um, there's no, there's no hope once you take that mark on your right hand or forehead, according to revelation 13, you can't buy or sell or do any business or do anything without it. And so if, if you're here then, and you come to Christ, then 
um, they, you know, and don't take the mark, they will kill you. But at least you'll be with Jesus, you know, if you come to Christ. But I would do it now to come to Christ now, believe in him now, because he's the only way to the Father and the only other place you can go is hell, heaven or hell. And time is running out. And, um, you know, we also have the, I'm going to be back. I'm going to get back to that first picture you saw of, um, Prince Harry in a second, but all these things are tying together. And so, okay. If you, so if you, it, let's just say, you know, this eclipse it is a warning, a seven day warning. It takes you to April 27th. Okay. Now, a couple hours ago, my husband and I were talking about something. I, I don't even remember what we were talking about. And some, for some reason, he mentioned uh, Prince um, Henry when he said, boom, if, you're, if you remember that, when he was with a picture. We'll go back to that. Um, let's go back to that. Here we are. Um, so I, I suddenly remembered when he said that, that the date on his phone was April 27th. So I went to check it and I want to show you something here. See? April 27th, 1815, 1815. So I look up that and I am blown away. Okay, where is it? I hope I didn't. Wow, I might have to go look for it again. I thought I had it up here. I must have closed it by accident. Okay, let me get it. Okay. Okay, this is, I can't even believe this. I mean, honestly, when I saw this, I thought, okay, you know what? I need to do a video. I don't want to make too big a deal out of this stuff. It's just a, 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 a you know, some guy's cell phone, you know, and the queen and boom. And of course, Obama's in, in the video too. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, it's, it's you know, there's so many codes and numbers and dates and, and movies and stuff that, you know, you don't want to just go, you know, just go down the wrong road with it. But when I saw this, I was like, okay, Strong's Greek 1815. Oh, it only means a rising up and out <laughs> and a resurrection. I mean, can you get any more direct than that? Rising up and out. Yeah, let's get out of here. And a resurrection. And then in Hebrew, if that isn't good enough, it means to burn. I mean, look at... Even here, Bible Tools has it that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I mean, so, so on Prince Henry's phone is 1815, a rising up, a resurrection and to burn. And we know things are going to be burning after the rapture. I mean, 
throughout the seven years of tribulation, a lot of the earth is going to be burned, completely burned. Um, so, all right, now, then something else connected to this whole thing. Okay, I realize, okay, let's look at the calendar second here. Torah calendar. Now, keep in mind, this is the second month on the Torah calendar. Okay, now, is this the correct calendar for the for God's time right now, or are we in the first month? Well, we might be in the first month, but for the sake of, uh, you know, for the sake of, I don't even know what, just sanity at this point. I mean, let's just, we got to stick to one calendar. This one, at least right now, is in sync again with Israel. So there is, there is valid reasons that um, when Jesus comes to get us, he's going to do it on a day that will mean a lot to Israel. Now, Look what I found while I was looking at this. I just noticed that okay, here's April 27th. It's the sixth day. Now, April 26th, I've mentioned before. I always I always felt like the rapture, it just it just had a ring to it for the rapture. Okay. Now this has absolutely no biblical backup. My, my April 26th thing is completely mine. It has nothing to do with the Bible. Not, it's just me. So take it or leave it. You know, it, it could mean absolutely nothing. But it's interesting that it's on the, you know, that it's the day before, hours before April 27th. And it's the 5th of IR. The second month is IR. That is when... Israel's true, that's Israel's true birthday. Okay, right here. I'll show you. It's the, it says right here, because Israel declared independence on May 14th, 1948, which corresponded with the Hebrew date of IR5 in that year. Yom Hatzmot, I don't know how to say it, was originally celebrated on that date. So the 5th of IR just happens to be hours before the 27th of April. If some, you know, um, Prince Henry goes on to say, uh, you know, boom in this little thing here. I'll show you. So you like to watch it together? Yes. Hey, Prince Harry, remember when you told us to bring it at the Invictus Games? Careful what you wish for. Boom. Oh, really? Please. Boom. Okay, so, like, what do you really mean by boom? What do you really mean by boom? That's the question here. All right, now... I have a theory on that one. Um, so, is something going to go down? A boom, a bomb, a nuclear hit, something big? It's also the 21st in the Omer Day count, which is interesting with, with the number 21, of course. And... Um, the Lord could come right before the boom on the 26th, which would be Israel's birthday, which would tell them, hey, maybe the real God, maybe God is really doing something. Maybe Yahweh, who they, you know, maybe Yahweh's doing something, although they reject Yeshua. So maybe they'll put it together that something's going on. If, if, if Yeshua was to come on this day 
and then there's some type of attack the next day. Um, it's it's a real possibility. I mean, you got Obama in this in, in this thing. You know, I mean, the, these <laughs> we've got some evil players going on here. So. Yeah, I mean, something could be planned for that day, and with the 1815 time stamp on it, to burn and the resurrection of, and to rise up and out, you know, it's it just, it's incredible right now to me to see all this stuff. And then, on top of that, I got a, uh, I saw a comment about Henry Groover on on my uh, video, my last video, and thank you for the comment. Thank you all for all your comments. You're all always full of amazing, rich knowledge. Um, so, so something I, I thought, what's the connection? Because, okay, so we, we're dealing with the royal family here, and now we have King Charles about to be court, have, coronated on May 6th. And so what struck me was this whole, the connection with the royal family right now. Um, and so, you know, I haven't really been that interested in it um, yet until I saw the comment. And then I, I thought, well, he mentioned Henry Groover had a vision uh, relating with, with, with King Charles was in his vision. Now, let me show you this. This is uh, something I found with um, Prince Charles' vision. So this is connecting to the possible boom here because, and I mean by that, I mean a nuclear hit. I mean, we... We just heard about six more, six submarines uh, left Russia into the Pacific that have nuclear um, capacities just two days ago. So this guy, Henry Groover, had a vision, Prince Charles, and this was back in 1986, okay? And he, this, Henry Groover had visions of, uh, of, of Russia attacking America. So look what's going on right now. Now, I'm going to play a minute of this so you can see the connection, why the fact that now King Charles is in the news Um about to be crowned is could could be telling very telling of this right now is about to happen up to the microphone and he said i thank you for coming today you're here by my request please take heed i have a message for you now that's henry groover speaking about prince charles at the time is saying what he's about to say right now and then he said these words I must inform you that your nation is at war and you have a battle to fight. But the saddest thing is, is you must fight it without God. With that, the general behind him, the American four-star general, jumped to his feet, come down off the platform, came around on the, the ground in front of him and looked up Charles very sarcastically. And he said, we know we're at war and we know we have a battle to fight, but we didn't know God had anything to do with it. Yeah. And here's the problem is that God has been completely thrown out of our country. And we ha America has a battle to fight, but the sad thing is that she'll be fighting it without God. That's what he said. What does that mean? It means that we will lose this war. So without God, means things like passing laws that little children 
can change their gender without telling their parents now. Uh, without God could mean when you fill out an application, they have about 20 different options for male and female or other plus 15 choices that I've never heard of. Perhaps without God means I don't even know, uh, you know, which bathroom to go in because I don't know if I feel like a, a guy or girl today. Let me see. What do I think? What? How do I feel? I can do whatever I want now. Or maybe without God means aborting and killing and murdering millions and millions of babies every year. Or maybe without God means uh, maybe some financial criminal activity or, you know, some, of course, you got to be careful. I got to be careful what I say here. Okay. I do. Because not allowed to say a lot anymore. So, um, but without God could mean like what a lot of people might say is conspiracy theory isn't really one. So, um, you know, in an anything goes society, that where good is evil and evil is good. Um, you know, not to mention trafficking. Okay. Yeah. So, um, listen, you know, we're at the end. We are at the end. We are at the end. This is, this is everything I've been saying the past few years from dreams that I've had from God. This is, this is actually the fulfillment happening right before our eyes of things that I've had the dreams of that I've told you about, you know, obviously 21 zero America is happening every day. It gets worse. It gets worse and it's going to finally end up, unfortunately, only unfortunately for those who are not saved, but obviously God has to judge evil and he cannot let these things continue on. And we're at the end anywhere. We're at the end of the age of grace. You know, that, and by the way, you know, that, that last Shemitah should literally be starting, uh, literally now it should be starting now and interesting that israel's birthday their real birthday is in a couple days um and you can see i mean i'm not going to go into it because i don't want this i gotta i don't want this thing to cut me off here but you know with the tension with iran and israel right now and Israel thinking they need to attack Iran because Iran is, has what they need now to nuke and destroy Israel as they've been saying they want to wipe them off the map for years. <clears throat> and now that they can, Israel, <clears throat> excuse me, Israel um, needs to do a preemptive strike. In fact, it could be any minute now. They were going to wait till Ramadan was over. Now it's over. The stage is set for Jacob's trouble. And so um, all of these things are looking like they're right, right on schedule. Right on schedule for the Bible. The Bible told you so. Um, seven years from now. 2030. Um, I, I saw an amazing video that, that talks about Christ being crucified in 30 AD and prove why it's then not any other year that people think, um, we're at 6,000 years minus seven is right now. So, okay. Now let me see if I have... 
Oh, uh, something minor here I'll, I'll mention. It, well, minor, but I mean, there's been deep studies on this lately, but <clears throat> um, I just looked up this right here for um, April 27, okay? Uh, the moon is entering into the cancer, the crab, which is is known as the, the place of shelter. And the moon, of course, is the bride. And so that's interesting because if there was a boom on the 27th, we would be taken to a place of safety. And then on top of that, look at this. Look what I noticed here. This is a straight line. Look at this straight line. Remember throughout the years, I've mentioned these dreams that the rapture would happen when the planets were in alignment in a straight line. You got Jupiter, Sun, Mercury, Uranus, Venus, and Mars, and the moon. Look at that. Straight line all the way. Jupiter in Pisces, the fish, on the 27th. The fish, the, 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 the great catch for the rapture. The sun in Aries, where the, which is the horn. The trump, the trumpet. Mercury, the messenger. Uranus, the symbol of heaven. And um, anyway, I haven't really gone into all that yet, but a, a perfect straight line and the bride, the moon in in the place of shelter right on this day. So for all of these reasons, I am, I am really, and not, not only that, did I mention the, yeah, I think I must have, but from this, the hybrid solar eclipse, Noah's seven day warning uh, takes you to the 27th. And that is a, you know, a solar eclipse is a warning, a warning to the world. And the, the rise of the Antichrist is literally, I mean, it's literally supposed to happen now in the timetable, in the timetable of God, of, of the calendars that we've gone over. It's the timing is just extraordinary for all of this. And so, um, <clears throat> we'll close with this Isaiah 40, 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So we look at these things like Jesus said to watch <clears throat> to watch because you don't know what hour your Lord doth come. And as we watch, we're keeping our hope alive. And that's why I think God uses me to, to, you know, to give messages like this of it could really happen, you know, and for all the times it didn't happen, it helped us keep watching and, and seeing what the Lord is doing and keeping our mind on the things of God and on the fact that he is coming to get us. So as you hope and you keep your hope, you will renew your strength and you will soar on wings like eagles. That, my friend, ultimately that's going to be when we really soar on wings and go up like eagles. You will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not be faint. So, um, so many reasons to know that we're about out of here, you know, we see, we see where the world is falling apart at the seams. I mean, there, one crisis after another, one train crash after another, one <clears throat> food production company on fire, one after another, chemical spills here and there. Uh, it just goes on and on. 
Um, financial collapse is on the way. Food shortages.